In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are dead in sin, and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
is filled with your glory and before your angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Augsburg and we give thanks for your presence here this morning and if you're visiting with us a special welcome to you, and please let us know how we can walk with you on your faith journey. We have returned to the tradition of having the uh, friendship registers at the end of each pew to share in celebrating your presence here today and to help us to welcome our visitors. So those are on the interior pews here, and we ask that you pass those down the rows and bring them back together so that our ushers can collect them later in the worship service. As we gather today, we're mindful that there are some who are not ready to return to public worship, and I would encourage you to remind them that from 12.30 to 2 today, we'll be behind the building offering Holy Communion in the way that we have in the past throughout this pandemic, drive through communion by coming forward through the portico. And Pastor Lori will be there to greet and spend time with each car that comes. And so we probably won't have the video out right by that point, but if you know someone who's not able to be in worship, I would encourage you to call them and invite them to share in that today. As we are gathered in these weeks, we remind us, we're reminded that next Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, and as part of that, our youth will help guide us through the Super Bowl of Caring, our annual tradition of raising funds for local hunger needs and our partnership with Christ's beloved community. And they'll be at the back outside at each service next Sunday, collecting monetary gifts. 
And so please be mindful of that next week as you worship and supporting Super Bowls of Caring and the great work that they do. And finally, a reminder that as we are filled with all sorts of emotions, as Pastor Lori shares her final sermon here today, and as she gathers with us next week for her final regular Sunday of worship, we want to wholeheartedly invite you to her ordination service here on Saturday the 26th at 3 p.m. with a reception to follow. It's going to be a beautiful day, and we look forward to celebrating in all the pageantry that God has blessed us with, that Pastor Lori has worked so hard to attain, and we are mindful of that. And so we give thanks for all this, and we also hold you in our hearts in transition and know that you do the same, as you'll share in just a few moments. Our service continues now as we hear God's word. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which you are also being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, 
and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord. For I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they left, when they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I think that I have been fishing once in my lifetime. It occurred a very long time ago, and my memory of it is somewhat vague. We were on a family vacation in the Shenandoah Mountains, my mom, my dad, my two brothers and me, along with my aunt and uncle and two cousins. It was the men's turn to entertain the kids. 
So my dad and my uncle took all five children fishing. The best that I can do for a good fish story is not about a fish at all. Maybe there's some memory of where my brother might have pushed my other brother into the lake. However, even though I didn't catch any fish on that fishing expedition, um, my story, my experience was not nearly as interesting as the familiar fish story in our text today. Experienced fishermen by trade. Simon, Andrew, James, and John had fished all night and had not caught one single fish. Once they arrived back on shore, they left their boats and began taking care of their nets in preparation for their next outing. At this same time, Jesus had made his way through the large crowd that was pressing in on him and took it upon himself to get into the empty boat that belonged to Simon Peter. Once aboard, Jesus asked Simon to take him a short distance from the shore where Jesus began to teach the crowd. All seemed okay until Jesus finished his teaching and then commanded Simon to put out into deep water and let down his net. Then came the promise of the catch. Yeah, right. What does a carpenter really know about fishing? Now, this interruption in Simon's day was beginning to be too much. Simon shrouds his incredulity and a possible eye roll and does just as Jesus asked. We know the outcome. Fish and plenty of them. What is really striking to me in this story is Simon Peter's responses throughout the text. I understand his exasperation at Jesus' command and promise when asked to go out into the deep water and let down his net. Sometimes circumstances require us to do things that appear to be a waste of time or energy, and we assume that there will be no fruit from our labor. So I appreciate Simon's respect to do as Jesus commanded, even when he was exhausted and it was most inconvenient. Jesus' response to Simon, grace. Ordinarily, we think that we must confess our sinfulness before God's grace is given to us. But this story illustrates the opposite. God's grace came in the form of an enormous amount of fish. Jesus did what Simon and the others could not accomplish on their own. It was then that Simon recognized his resistance and his reticence to obey the Lord's command. He thought he was the expert on fishing, and based on his knowledge and expertise, he knew that it would be useless to cast a net at that time of day. Not only did he catch fish, Simon Peter caught a glimpse of Jesus' sovereignty, and he also caught a good look at his own sinfulness. Simon Peter also recognized that he was truly in the presence of one much greater than himself, Humbled at meeting God's Son face to face and being the recipient of a miraculous abundance of fish was again too much. 
He asked Jesus to go away, which was a common and appropriate response to divine presence in the ancient world. Jesus' second response to Simon, more grace. Do not be afraid, Jesus said. From now on, you will be catching people. The Greek word for catching used here is rarely used in the New Testament, but in this text it means to catch alive, to restore to life and strength, to revive. This would be Simon Peter's new call, catching people. This was not an invitation, but a pronouncement for him and for Andrew and James and John, restoring life and strength to people in their midst. Jesus called them to catch people after he had shown them that he can catch fish through them when they cannot do so on their own and not because of their knowledge or experience or because they were even good at it. This is true for us as well. When we truly, deeply, and humbly realize that we have nothing worthy to bring into Christ's presence for the ministry of the church, that may be the moment Christ begins to use us in ways we could never imagine. This reminds me of the last verse that we sing in the hymn In the Bleak Midwinter by Christina Rossetti. What can I give him as poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. Like Simon Peter, our sinfulness, our failures, nor our inadequacies prevents God from using us to catch people and being part of restoring them to life and strength. We are called to catch people in a way that is life-giving rather than life-taking. In other words, we are to point people to Christ through words and actions of love and grace and mercy. And then there is that last response. After catching so many fish that Simon had to summon for help, with their boats nearly sinking and attempting to harness their astonishment, they brought their boats back to shore. They left everything and followed him. The fishermen walked away from that bounty of fish. They left what was familiar, not really knowing what was ahead, yet trusting Jesus enough to go on an open and uncharted journey with him. This response is the one that most resonates with me in this season of life. Just as the fishermen were about to embark on a new beginning, so are you and me. It has been an honor to be one of your pastors for nearly five years. And yet, I am confident of my call to leave behind the city and the home that I have lived in for 30 years, to walk away from the comfort and familiarity of my neighbors and friends. And most of all, 
to leave the daily generous and unconditional love from all of you. Trusting that God is with me and preparing the way for me and also preparing the way for you. You, as the church, are also being called into unfamiliar waters. God is at work here at Augsburg, doing things through you that individually or corporately could not be done on your own. The work of the campus renewal steering team, will, their work will soon be shared with you in listening sessions so that you can vision and dream of what God has in store. I encourage you all to participate in those sessions. The Living Legacy campaign will also be starting this spring and we hope at some point in the very near future that we can begin to regather as ministry teams, as small groups, as Sunday school classes, and as fellowship. This is Christ's church. He is the head of it. You are merely the caretakers of it for the brief time you have in this world. This is where he wants to give you the gifts of forgiveness, the gift of new life and of salvation through his unchanging word and through the sacraments in the midst of a world that is constantly changing, constantly busy, and sometimes seemingly out of control. When you look toward your bright and promising future here, look first to God, then look forward to discovering new things about yourself and about God who is with us in our transitions. For it is often in the transitions of life that occasions for growth, for strength, and for healing to occur. Do not take your focus off of Jesus. Walk with each other as siblings united in love, acting with justice, serving one another and our neighbors, and always walking humbly with God. I will be the first to admit that leaving the familiar and stepping into the new life to which God has called is scary. But all God asks of us is faith and the willingness to take the first step. We are all called through our baptism to participate in God's mission to the world in Jesus Christ. And like the fishermen, this means that we are called to reorient our priorities to align with God's priorities. Jesus does not wait until we think we are ready. And I can attest to that. We are called each and every day in spite of our doubts, our fears, our insecurities, and even in the midst of our busy and messy lives. What this story illustrates is the call to discipleship. Jesus shows up in the midst of our everyday lives, in, interrupts what we are doing, and instructs us on what Jesus wants us to do. Look for him. Listen to him. Watch, for the mirror will be held up to you to make you aware of your own inadequacy, your own sinfulness. Then this will be followed 
by an experience of God's grace, a call to service, and then your faithful response to that call. To use the words Jesus often used, do not be afraid. As I prepare to leave this place, I am already missing you. I have been praying for you. And I will leave in the confidence of Jesus' promise. He will always be with you to the very end of the age because you are his church. Thanks be to God. God's abundant grace, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. Lord, in your mercy. Holy are you, O God of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled of your glory. Reveal your splendor in the sunsets and twilights and in all of the beauty of the earth. Help us to care for creation in ways in our individual lives and in our lives together. Lord, in your mercy. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and impulse towards violence. We especially pray this day for the chaos along the Ukrainian border. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others. Lord, in your mercy. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. Today we lift up Pat Cope, Shandi Lester, Jeff Greenwood, Charles Stevens, Kathy Liner, Lee Troutman, John Boutwell, Pat Pack, Sandy Beard, Alice Elsner, Daniel Hudgens, Marion Apel, Darlene Wall, Elaine Williams, Harold Beavis, Bob Baines, the Michael Robinson family, Jay Wise, Hank Farrar, John Paolo Pasquinelli, and all those who we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we lift up to you our sister, Pastor Lori Carter, in her time of call and transition, and pray that you strengthen her with wisdom and peace in the midst of this process, in the logistics of moving, and in the preparation for what you have in store. Sustain her and us in our grief and in our hope, and that in all things remind us that we are guided by your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us in your glory. Today we remember Paul Kahn, Brett Warner, the father of Art Kintz, Michelle Page, Susan Sherwin, Dan Moore, Bob Milner, Robert Pfeiffer, Lee McCusick. Lord, in your mercy. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us remain standing as we share our gifts. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things, 
Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you to mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father,
bread, we share the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ. of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with mercy 